Welcome to the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show, where we make plant-based cooking easy. I'm Jill, and today we are making a vegan meatloaf. Grab a plate, cause it's the all-free whole food plant-based cooking show. Hi everybody, so vegan meatloaf. This is something you guys have been waiting for for a while, especially those of you in our membership community, because this was the winning vote for the month, so I finally figured it out. So we're just gonna hop right in. I've got a hot pan here and I've got uh, one whole onion diced, two celery, and three cloves of garlic. So we're gonna get that in the pan. And if you want the full recipe, that link will be in the details in the link below. So we wanna get our onions and celery and garlic cooking until they're, you know, just the same as any recipe, until they're translucent. And I like to actually add my mushrooms in at the same time because when the mushrooms cook, they're gonna release that moisture because when you're cooking like this, we're not gonna cook with oil. We're not gonna put anything in our pan, but when that moisture comes out of the mushrooms, it's gonna keep the onions and the celery from sticking to the bottom of the pan. So we're just gonna throw that in there. This is an eight ounce container of mushrooms and these are just baby bellas but you could use any kind of mushroom you want. You could use shiitake even, or um, just regular white mushrooms. They work great too. So we're gonna get that going. It's probably gonna take about five minutes to cook that down, five to 10 minutes to cook it down. And you wanna cook this until all of that moisture is cooked out. We don't want any of that moisture going in and making a mushy meatloaf. So we're gonna let that cook for a few minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you the rest of the ingredients. Okay, once you get your onions and mushrooms to this point right here, I've got two cups of shredded cabbage that we're gonna add to that, that we are just gonna cook it down for a few more minutes, just until, really, until the cabbage is wilted, you know, just to make sure that none of that, more of that liquid is gonna come out. And then we can mix it all together. While we're waiting for that, I'd like to share with you some background on our show. The Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show is crowdfunded, which means these free weekly recipe videos, along with our entire catalog of recipes on our website, plantbasedcookingshow.com, and our new Plant-Based Cooking Made Easy Cookbook are all made possible in part by the generous patronage of our supporting members. By becoming a supporting member, you gain access to great member perks like monthly product giveaways, free downloads of our eBooks, and access to our in-depth courses, including our 28 Days Plant-Based Made Easy course, where we offer a step-by-step -step guide to making the switch to a fully plant-based diet. We create this show for the hundreds of thousands of viewers just like you who tune in each month from all over the world to make it easy for everyone to live a plant-based lifestyle. So if you love our content, please join us on our mission and become a supporting member today by following the link in the description. Okay, let's get back to the show. Okay, so now our cabbage and onions and mushrooms are done. This is nice and dry looking. Okay, now on to our other ingredients. So what I've got here is a half a cup of buckwheat and a half a cup of quinoa that I have soaked for six hours. So you kind of do need to plan ahead a little bit on this recipe. So if you're planning on making it that evening, you might want to get these started soaking in the morning. I just Put, the, put them in here and I covered them with water a good couple inches and just let them soak. Then I poured off the liquid just you know right before we're doing this. And that's all you need to do. So we're gonna put that in there first. We're gonna put that in our food processor. And this is in place of, this is, you know, cause this is a gluten-free meatloaf. A lot of people use, you know, wheat flour so they can have that gluten which would hold it all together but I wanted this to be a gluten-free recipe, so that's why we're going with buckwheat and quinoa. The next ingredient is black beans. So this is one can, one 14 ounce can of black beans that I've already rinsed and uh, drained. Then we have our spices here. So I've got some onion powder, and that's how much. That is a teaspoon of onion powder. I've got a half teaspoon of thyme, and a half teaspoon of sage. And then I have a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika. 
and that's going to give it that nice smoky meaty flavor and then i have a fourth of a cup of flax meal okay that's just ground flax seeds and that is what's going to kind of glue everything together and hold it together then we're going to add one tablespoon of tomato paste and about a tablespoon of, this is just a stone ground mustard. You can use whatever kind of mustard you like. It gives, it just gives it that nice kind of bitey flavor. I just like it a lot. And then an, a good amount of pepper, probably, you know, a half teaspoon, all the way up to one teaspoon. Cause you know, I like my cracked pepper. Okay. And now we're just gonna add all of this stuff to it. Okay, it's gonna be really hot. And this is a great recipe. You know, I always like to hide my veggies in there, even though my kids are grown and they weren't real picky eaters, picky vegetable eater kids. You know, they pr pretty much ate anything that I made for them. But if you have picky ones at home, this is a great way to hide those veggies. I mean, all that cabbage in there, wow, you can't get better. Okay, so now we're just going to uh, mix this lightly in our food processor. So you want to get it to the point where it just kind of looks like ground beef. You know, it's not a paste, but it's, you know, a, there's still little chunks of this and that here and there. So we're just going to mix that. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides a little bit, make sure everything's getting in there good. Just probably one more mix and then it's good. And I'm just going to pulse it because I don't want it to get any more pasty. Okay, that looks good to me. Now the secret here is that you need to let this mixture sit for about 15 minutes because you want that flax meal to start soaking up the liquid in there and you know it starts just doing what it does it soaks that liquid up and it starts gluing it together if you just put it straight in the oven right now you're gonna have kind of a mushy meatloaf so I'm gonna let that sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll get on to the tomato topping Okay, so now on to that tomatoey topping. So most people, I think in a typical meatloaf, it's like ketchup or something cooked on the top, or maybe that's just the way my mom did it. I never personally liked it. So, but this tomato um, topping is so delicious. You are not gonna believe it. All right, so we're gonna start with five deglet dates. These are just little deglet dates. If you're using Medjool, it might be only like one and a half or maybe two, just kind of depends on the size. And then we have one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. It's gonna give it a really nice punchy flavor. And then we have a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of paprika or smoked paprika, and then a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin. Get that all in there. And then we're going to do three tablespoons of tomato paste. This is so, so simple. And I mean, this would be a great, um, like a homemade ketchup. It's so, so delicious. And then one half of a cup of water. And we're just going to use our nifty little Nutribullet here because that's all we need. That's not a very big amount. So, um, hopefully you have a smaller blender or maybe a regular size blender. Some of the bigger ones like the Vitamix, it might be hard to mix, you know, that amount. It's kind of a smaller amount. Okay, so we're just going to mix this until there aren't any date chunks left. That looks great. I can already smell it. Mm. 
smells so good. I absolutely love this sauce. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Our mixture has been sitting here, setting up, and it looks great. It definitely looks like a meatloafy mixture to me. Okay. And so I have just my regular Pyrex uh, bread pan. I think it's like nine by four, just a regular bread size pan. And I got a tip from one of our viewers with parchment paper. Because you want to be able, with a meatloaf, you kind of want to be able to, to plop it out of that pan and serve it on a plate, you know, with, without it being in a dish, because you want to see the whole thing. So an easy way to do that is with parchment paper. But it's hard to get the parchment paper in there and to get it to stick well, so they said to wad it up into a ball, and then you're, you can easily form it to your pan. What a great tip, I just love it. Sorry, I can't remember who that was that gave me that tip, but it's a great tip. All right, so now we're just gonna pour this whole mixture in there. And I already have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Let me get all of that goodness out of there. Mm. I can smell that, smell the onions. The tomato, it smells so good. Okay, I'm just gonna smoosh it down in there good. Okay, you wanna kinda smooth the top just lightly. It doesn't have to look perfect because you're gonna pour that tomatoey mixture on the top, so you're not gonna see the top of this at all. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna pour all of this onto here. And it may look like a lot, but trust me, when you start eating this, you're gonna want more of the sauce. It is so good. Get all of that out of there. Okay. And then just spread it around, spread it on the top. It doesn't have to be super fancy. Just make sure you're covering all of that meatloaf. Okay, now we're ready for the oven. So let's get it in there. So I'm gonna put this in the oven for an entire hour. Okay, it is done guys. Come on in and take a look because this is just amazing. The smells so good. Okay, but the secret to this recipe is once you take it out of the oven, you want to let it sit and cool for, you know, about 20 minutes or so because it's going to continue to set up. You know, it, um, it's going to get thicker and firmer and even like tomorrow you know once your leftovers are in the refrigerator and you eat those for leftovers tomorrow it's even better the second day so i'm going to let this cool for a few minutes plop it out onto a plate and then we'll go in for a taste okay time for a taste i'm gonna cut this guy see how pretty that is let me pull that out of the pan with the parchment oh my gosh look at that look at that wow Amazing. I mean, to me, that looks just like a regular meatloaf to me. But let's see about the flavor. Mmm. Oh my gosh, I love the topping. Mmm. 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 And the buckwheat and the quinoa stays a little bit firm, so it kind of gives you that feeling like, like what a regular meatloaf would be. It's a little bit kind of grainy. Mm. All those flavors together, but that topping, mm, that really makes the meatloaf. Mm. Mm. So be sure to give this a like, guys. And I'll see you next week.